Hello everyone and welcome to the Deeply Renegade podcast. My name is Molly, also known as the Deeply Renegade, and I'd like to welcome you guys to episode 304. Today is Saturday, February 1st, 2020, and I'm glad you could join me today. Um, we are hanging out in the outdoors again because it was a little bit less crazy. Um, luckily, um, what was it? We're not house hunting anymore. Yay! Um, so we ended up having an offer accepted on a house. So today our primary goal was um, to measure it. <laughs> um, so um, what was it? So we ended up spending the morning making a basically a floor plan and layout and that sort of thing. So we can figure out if we want to do something different with it. So, um, would it be? But very exciting. I'm not sure how much longer we will be here. Um, we'll have to figure out what order things go in because um, we will have to do some some renovations in order to make it how we like it. But we got a good deal. <laughs> oh, god. It was crazy, or whatever. It's crazy expensive, so. Such is life. Um, it was under budget. <laughs> so, um, on the knitting front, I don't think it's been too crazy. I believe I got most of my knitting done um, this week at the Black Squirrel. Um, so that is the local yarn shop in Berkeley. Um, which has a two-fold double awesomeness because I get to go right after work and then knit night goes on for- I probably stay too late at knit night this week, but knit night goes on long enough that um, it's the traffic's done going into San Francisco and the toll's cheaper. Yay! So, win win right there. But, um, what was it? I ended up wearing my v-neck boxy um, because I did not have a finished ring <laughs> boxy. <laughs> um, but things are coming along fairly nicely. Um, it's just going to take some more time. So, um, I can knit until I run out of yarn, um, but I may want to throw this onto a cable so that I can get it on and have it be fully unfurled, um, and see how everything's coming together. I neglected to take a photo when I put it on, um, whatever, Thursday night. But such is life. So this is the v-neck boxy, which is a Hohi Locatelli pattern. Um, I am knitting it out of Shibui Knits, in, um, or two Shibui Knits yarns help double. So I am knitting it with um, the Silk Cloud in the Abyss colorway, and the Pebble in the Blueprint colorway. And it's making this lovely moody dark blue thing. It's going to be great. Um, I ended up modifying the pattern by subbing out the color for the cuffs, the neckband, and eventually the bottom. And I'm also currently doing a high-low hem. So I knit the front to what it calls for in the pattern, to for the most part. <laughs> um, and then I am knitting the back extra long. And so I should be making it longer at a rate of about how much I have here, but there is a certain amount of curbing going on. So you can see that the back is, um, you can see I have this sort of gentle curve going on here, and it's not lying totally 100% flat. Um, and then I have that. So. It shall, like, it won't be like a, I don't think I'm gonna do like a split. Um, I'm just gonna have this topography in here. And so, where this stitch marker is here is actually the 50% mark. So, I've only eaten, I don't know, maybe like two or three inches into the front. And considering it's gonna be like it's however far and wide across. 
don't think it'll be a big deal. So, um, but I'm not there yet. Um, it didn't, it didn't get a whole lot of love this week. Um, but such as I ended up probably focusing more on spinning this week, as you do. Um, but hopefully I can get a good burn on this tomorrow. So there will be lots of knitting time during, um, whatever, the big game. Um, it was actually sort of funny. I was um, driving back last night and pretty much every building in San Francisco that could have colored lights did have red and gold colored lights because um, the 49ers are, are playing. So, as you do. Um, so that, that was an entertaining little bit of whatever. Hometown pride. Um, so, um, I have been pondering a little bit because I've noticed um, maybe part of what the, the knitting malaise has been. So it would be the case you're like, oh dear god, or personally, like, oh dear god, why, why am I not done with this sweater? And it's just because I haven't been super duper inspired to, to knit upon it. But also, um, what yarn I have with me for the most part represents like obligation knits, which to be fair, um, I have managed to crank through at least a couple of those things. Um, so the dragons and um, the grandpa socks, for example, um, were things that I ended up doing around that Thanksgiving fall time frame. Um, but I'm just thinking about like, what could I do next from here? Um, and so one thing would be to knit more grandpa socks since they fit, and that's good. Um, but that would be still obligation knitting. But it might be it might be worth doing anyways. Um, just as most knit worthy person I know. <laughs> um, and um the Dear Sweet Lovable One has been complaining um, about the fact that I have not made him tessellated lizard mitts, and I do have uh, sorry, don't really want this on the mossy, the mossy wood of this whatever slightly janky patio. <laughs> um, so I could. I could make him those, but um, I may need to figure out um, a place where I can get um, teeny cirques of unusually small size, um, because what I'm probably going to have to do to make the pattern work is um, knit it pretty tight. So I have like heavy lace yarn, so I should actually be able to modify it by or get it to work for him by gauge instead of by changing the pattern because the tessellation is complicated and there's just no way. So, um, but that's still an obligation that. <laughs> uh, I brought yarn for uh, Via Hante for my cousin. It's still an obligation that. So you can, you can see where this is going. So a lot of my stash right now is like earmark for people who aren't me. Um, and this this is for me, so that's not terrible. It's just it takes a long time to knit this. Um, and then finding out whether or not I will have enough yarn. As you do. So I don't know, it's just it's just interesting to to ponder these things and figure out what what's really going to make me um, a little bit more excited because it's been meh. Um, and maybe part of this is just get, getting out of the super tight quarters that we're currently in. Um, we shall see. But it was just interesting to be like, okay, what, what do I want to do? Um,
And I haven't, I haven't quite figured out what that is going to be or what that is going to look like at this point. Um, so, in terms of um, like a nearly impossible task that I could do when I'm cruising the Stitches West Bender Hall would be to actually, say for example, look for um, a woolly wool gradient for the swim ring. Swim ring? Something like that. I don't know. Whatever. Or if I will need to um, go with something else, like um, flywheel or some other type of non-superwash woolly wool in beautiful colors. I know, it may, I don't know, or it could like be like a dining exercise as well, that could be interesting. As you do. Um, I did probably have to work on um, the, or my dining skills, to be quite frank. <laughs> um, just all sorts of interesting insects out here right now. But, um, so that is going to be a challenge, because oftentimes shows like this don't tend to skew that way. So, possibility. Um, I could also look for yarn for Ispray as well. Um, and I have a couple of sweater quantities with me um, in terms of stuff that I could cast on. So, there is the... Um, I don't know if it's all cotton or it's cotton wool that I have for a weekender, a Marl weekender, because apparently Marl all the things. Um, <laughs> I have the Miss Babs for a flare. I have the other Miss Babs, which was going to be a um, Zweig, but I am not supporting Caitlin Hunter, so. <laughs> Um, I think I had a couple of substitutions in mind for for that. Um, so still having like a color work yoke, um, but using uh, or whatever patronizing a different designer. Um, and um, oh, what would it be? Do I have other ones floating around? Maybe not. Um, I have like a red skein of Omisa lace, which could be a sweater if I feel like it. Um, now that I am no longer in the land of the sliverfish, I can feel good about knitting with my little mice again. Like, cause, like, if, for, for the keen-eyed viewers, I am the new I will mice um, a whole lot, um, because it was not safe in Dallas to do so. Um, I don't know what it was, if whatever chemicals were used to dye it, or whatever was up with that wool, but, um, I've, I've struggled to keep all of those things nice. Um, so, I think I, it's, the coast is clear and I can finally use it again, thank goodness. Um, there could be socks for me, um, because I probably do need socks. Um, I definitely lost my sock mojo for, um, or I haven't had super high sock mojo so could be a possibility. Definitely do need to replace socks that have died. So I don't know, that, that sort of would it be figuring out what, what it is that I really want to do or like what's really gonna hit the spot is a shawl. Who knows? Um, because I actually have most of my shawls with me, I definitely, and I have them displayed pretty prominently, and I do need one every day <laughs> in this fabulous 57 degree lifestyle. Um, I don't know, I, it feels like it's probably more than 57 today. Oh, is there an easy way to check? There might be an easy way to check. Let's see what happens. All right, it is sixty one, not fifty seven. 
It'll be closer than normal tomorrow. <laughs> Um, yeah. So, pretty, pretty darn nice. It's also like a sunny, clear day as well, which, because the back is actually of, you, you can't tell the difference between this side, which is a white building, and this side, which is the sky. And it's not even really a white building, it's more like cream. So, sorry, that's blown out. My, like, I think this looks pretty natural, so that's good, but <laughs> no big deal. So, I guess I, I'm still struggling a little bit on what's going to happen next, and it might just be socks, and then after that I can begin thinking socks for my grandpa, and then start thinking about if I want something, or I can cast on two things for me, and one that's obligation, crank through the socks then do the hand warmers, and then whatever my knee project is, um, will be something else. Options. Um, that might, that might be the, the best way to solve this conundrum, because, um, because I have been more like a two-project matter instead of a one-project matter, and I've been a one-project matter for this. Even though it is a little bit awkward to carry around for this place. Okay. So, on the spinning front, I have another finished skein to show. So, these are roughly two ounces. Um, this one might be a little heavier because I've incorporated all of my leftovers from the other skeins into it. But this is the Teal Teal Teal. It is a three-ply lace weight. Um, so I ended up getting um, 412 yards out of this bad boy. And what I like about this actually quite a lot is that uh, the tonalness, so this started off as dark gray fiber, and um, it, and then I ended up dyeing it with purple um, that broke, and then I didn't like how I didn't have as much color saturation as I want, so I over it blue, and then got this teal. Um, and I do actually, I don't know whether or not it's possible to show on the screen, but every ply is actually fairly tonal, so we'll just bring it super close. So you can maybe see that there's a decent amount of variation in color, even though it is solid. And that's what you get when you dye in the wool. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I feel so bold. That is an interesting question, though. Hmm. I just realized that it's possible that this could be a, a screen ring because this definitely felt. <laughs> it may. It may be too fine. I don't know. It may not be enough contrast either. Um, so, okay. So, Now, can begin to see more color shifting because I actually have this full thing. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Like, you can definitely tell, like, the ones on the end are very different from each other, but. Perhaps this all just looks vaguely teal. <laughs> so on this end, we have more purple. On this end, we have more blue. And you can... But I'm not sure whether or not this is going to show through super nicely on the camera, because obviously we know this purple just doesn't capture right. Um, 
We'll see if we can make a nice uh, fiber sandwich and show you guys up close. No, these games are getting in the way of me being able to see if it's actually working. So, so we got our fiber sandwich. So, this side is the purple side, and this side, with my thumb wiggling, is the blue. But I'm trying to get it all to show at the same time that I can sort of see what's going on. So, it's pretty subtle. It's more obvious in real life. <laughs> Coming at you from your TV screen. I know, it could be computer or phone. But I now have a complete bridge up here. And so there's two more on this side and two more on this side. So next or so there'll be blue 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 and blue blue purple and then purple purple blue or purple 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 and purple purple blue. And then I will have nine skeins that will form a circle of color, and then I will have to choose which one is my center one. That's a card. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, so it's pretty dreamy. Um, is it super duper high contrast? No. Will it probably work quite well in the Mesa sweater rack? Probably. Um, so I haven't, um, so I did count yardage on this one. I did count yardage on this one. This one I think ended up turning out shorter because there was less blue. Um, or there's more blue in the waist gain and less blue in, in the top. And then um, I ended up picking up, I think, I think I picked up um, blue, blue, purple to spin next. No, I picked up purple, purple, blue to spin next. Aha! So, um, basically, um, I should have a decent amount of leftovers of the purple as well, when because the blue is the least. Um, yeah, so, come on together. Another one bites the dust. Now, in terms of like my spin the bin progress, we'll see. Um, because what would it be? So I finished. So that tail, tail, tail was the first one that counted for my bin. So I was in between for the. Uh, I was in between for the uh, uh, blue, blue teal. So that was awkwardly of neither. Um, but what I have going on here is um so i've been keeping my purples in the brown bags and my blues in the gray so, um, so we have this guy which i may just save for last um and then i have these two in here so i just put them all into a bag because i then know that they go together and i'm not accidentally spinning the wrong thing and you can maybe see like, this one has some definite layers of color to it, so it'll be interesting to see how that all comes together. But that's going on my wheel soon. I could have started, started it last night, but then thing, things were weird. We went to bed early, and that was fantastic. I definitely need to get better at going to bed early. Because if I'm waking up at the same time, then... <laughs> Just good sense. So, um, I have been carrying my um, spinning around with me in my giant blue DFW Fiberfest bag, um, but it didn't. My spindle project didn't get any love. Full well. um, so it should be. Oh, it shouldn't be too crazy. Um,
I suspect um, would it be. So tomorrow there is a spinning group um, that I was thinking about trying out, but um, the timing ends up being a little bit weird. So I think I'm just going to end up going to a party instead of that. But hopefully I can hit it up in March because um, it's a monthly sort of thing. And then there is a different spinning group that meets the second weekend day of the month in Half Moon Bay. So I will be doing that. Um, barring any weird stuff, but I think, I think that ends up working out pretty okay. So, can't go to the one in the second. I don't know if it's the eighth or ninth, I'm not sure, whatever. But, one, one, one of those two days I should be able to make it work. Um, and then, um, what would it be? I'll be a little bit, um, or would it be? So, it might be the case where it's a little bit late on the podcast um, in the month of February. So even though there are 29 days, um, I'm probably going to end up missing the last two weeks in February just because I'm going to be on vacation. So, But I should be good for the next two weeks at least. But I'm excited about vacation. I'm excited about vacation today. Um, and whatever else ends up shaking out, as you do. Um, and then laughing a little bit, so we were making fun of the guy who ended up buying our house in Dallas, because he totally forgot he was going to be out of country on the closing date. We did the exact same thing. <laughs> it's okay. We are going to be, we can sign the, we were going to have to sign the papers. Um, on, on a different day anyway, so it doesn't matter, but it was like, <laughs> It's just like, karma. <laughs> so, would it be, I, I'm very excited about this prospect. Um, what would it be? We were beginning to be in that halfway point between, uh, despair and <laughs> and grinding um, so I'm really glad we, we succeeded and only it only took two tries so um, what would it be in the neighborhood we wanted um, with um, small compromises from where we would have or small compromises from what ended up inspiring us to want to be there anyways so shouldn't be too, too crazy. Um, but hopefully, um, hopefully I was able to give a pretty good outlook on, like, where, where I am knitting much right now, even though I am just working on this project that will never end and will soak up all of my knitting. <laughs> As you do. So, with that, I hope you guys have a lovely week, and I look forward to talking to you guys soon. So, take care guys. Bye-bye.